Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Alumni Career Management session today on LinkedIn and how you can build your brand on LinkedIn. My name is Perry Monaco. I am a strategic product consultant with LinkedIn. I'm also a Western University graduate, graduating with my Bachelor of Arts in History in 2000. I thought I would start off today's session by talking about something that our one of our co-founders highlighted uh, recently where he suggested that the future belongs to networkers. I would suggest that this is, while um, certainly highlighted, I think, um, greatly in the last five years with the explosion of social media and certainly with the rise of LinkedIn as the world's largest professional networking site, I would suggest that a lot of the types of strategies and, and things that we're going to be talking about today about building your own brand on LinkedIn have been in existence for a long time. Um, LinkedIn has allowed you to be able to take that to the digital space and be able to cast a wider net than you've ever been able to before. Um, but just look back in the past about people who have been successful, some of the people that are household names and then other people that perhaps we've never heard of but have been very successful in their careers. Not one of those particular individuals did that by themselves. Um, successful people are, are surrounded by other successful people and they they seek out individuals that they can uh, work with that will help them make them better, that will push them in a direction that perhaps they are both uncomfortable with and not necessarily educated about, but leverage those, uh, those relationships to um, find the experts in the different areas that can help them become more successful. So the future has always belonged to networkers, and I think that this uh, is a relevant quote no matter what year it is, whether it be 2014, 1914, or even 1814. Um, networkers um, have always been successful. Networkers always find a way to rise to the top, and this is a way, um, again, LinkedIn provides the opportunity for us to be able to network in ways in which we hadn't considered in the past. So in today's session, what are we going to find out? Let's talk a little bit about what LinkedIn is, how LinkedIn can help us, and how you're going to be able to build your brand on LinkedIn. I think building your brand or the idea of individuals having a brand is somewhat foreign. Uh, it's certainly a new concept. I think most of us consider brands to be products or services like Coke or Nike, something that's really uh, recognizable. But I think within the last um, 10 to 15 years, brands have evolved to now include individuals. Think about some famous movie stars or even more appropriately, famous athletes. Um, individuals like Serena Williams or Tiger Woods, they have their own brand. Um, I probably started with Michael Jordan, right? Michael Jordan was known probably for as much of his basketball career as he was for um, his shoes. And so individuals um, are becoming brands. Um, we are brands, and it's not just for celebrities anymore. It's also for individuals like yourselves. So let's talk about our mission statement first. LinkedIn's mission is to connect the world's professionals and to make them more productive and successful. I think this is a really ambitious mission statement. I guess that's how they're supposed to be written. Um, but this is really, um, this really speaks to what LinkedIn is all about as an organization and what it is that we are trying to achieve um, through the LinkedIn.com site. Um, everything that we do as an organization is members first. Uh, we want to make sure that our members have a positive experience and that our members are engaged on LinkedIn. And if we can do that, then by connecting professionals around the world, we'll definitely make people more productive and more successful. This is something that is um, part of our everyday here at LinkedIn and something that we um, hope that one day we can, we can accomplish at great scale. Let's talk about LinkedIn in general in terms of the overall size before we dive into building our brand. This is an important, I think, perspective to, to appreciate how many people can be viewing our brand or our profiles. Um, we have more than 300 million members worldwide, um, growing at a rate of more than two new members per second. And look at this here, the number of monthly unique visitors is over 187 million. Um, that's a lot of people doing a lot of things on LinkedIn. There's a lot of different um, individuals who are visiting LinkedIn on a monthly basis. And so um, we, can, we should consider the fact that because this is an active place that people are um, actively 
uh, participating in the LinkedIn network that we should make sure that we're presenting the right brand. We're giving people the right first impression of who we are. You'll notice that the largest geography here is the United States. And while the United States has recently eclipsed 100 million members, um, that represents the smallest percentage of our American membership in the history of LinkedIn. LinkedIn is truly a global network. There is lots of talent on LinkedIn and the United States, while certainly is the largest, um, you can see that the percentage of, of people outside of the United States is continuing to grow. Uh, following the United States in terms of size is India, Brazil, the United Kingdom, and then Canada is the number five. So for those of you who are in Canada, recognize the fact that there is an extremely high penetration in this market of LinkedIn members, um, and at over nine million membership, nine million members, excuse me, in Canada, if you're not on LinkedIn, your competition or the people you want to do business with likely are. There's three different opportunities that we provide to our membership, and I want to talk briefly about those. So if you're on LinkedIn right now, there's three things that you can take advantage of immediately. One is the opportunity for you to be able to create your professional identity online. LinkedIn strives to be the uh, professional identity of record online, and uh, this is an opportunity for you to be able to present your brand, but also to connect with other people who have um, a common goal or people who can help you achieve your goal, uh, classmates perhaps, um, coworkers, colleagues, all sorts of different individuals that you can connect with, promote this brand to, um, find individuals and also be found. LinkedIn is also a data-driven company. We, uh, we have, a, obviously, with over 300 million members telling us what they do and where they've been, there's a lot of different data points that we can, we can deliver back to our membership, and we, and we strive to do that uh, every single day. So if you visit your profile, you'll notice um, that there's lots of different places on LinkedIn where we'll deliver data to you about who's in your network, uh, what your network looks like, um, all types of different data points that we provide to you in terms of insights. And finally, LinkedIn allows you to take your professional network everywhere. So no longer are you bound to the fact that you have to be in front of a computer. Um, you can now take your LinkedIn network wherever it is that you happen to go, whether that be on the Android, uh, iPhone, Blackberry, or any of the various tablets that perhaps you use. You've got the opportunity to take that, that network wherever it is that you happen to go. Let's take a snapshot of social media in general and get an idea of where LinkedIn sort of fits into this. Um, I'm certainly not here to suggest to you that LinkedIn should be the only network uh, in which you are active. Um, I would suggest that depending on how many of these particular networks or online sites you happen to be active on, LinkedIn might be a site that perhaps you're Least active, like least active on in terms of time in the day, um, but it is probably of all of these the most important to ensure that our presence is exactly the types of presence that we want to make that we want to deliver. And so, while you may be active on Facebook, looking at other people's pictures or updating your status or commenting on your favorite show finale and how that disappointed you or how exciting it was, um, LinkedIn is definitely a place where you that fits into this in, in a very niche way. Um, this is an opportunity for us to make sure that our professional brand is really highlighted in the way in which we want to highlight it. So let's take the top three or the big three, I guess, um, and, and see how they sort of compare to one another and talk about the different goals that perhaps you want you would uh, accomplish on each of these. Um, the first one is Facebook, and, and it's certainly one that I am very active on. This is a much more social, um, personal type of network. Um, you're really not going to find out a whole lot of information about me here other than um, my sense of humor perhaps, using my status updates, what my children look like, um, adventures that my family and I go on on the weekend, or perhaps what's relevant to me at that particular point in time from a personal perspective. So the people I connect to here on Facebook are, are generally family and friends. 
Twitter is much more of a broadcast medium, I find, for individuals. It's where you communicate in 140 characters, let people know um, whatever it is that your theme happens to be or whatever it is that you're, you're thinking at that particular point in time. It's like, um, it, it is like a public broadcast in the sense that, it, you know, imagine you're standing on the top of a building and your audience is below and you're on your a bullhorn letting people know, um, you know, what you want to say. A lot of people will use Twitter not as a broadcast medium, medium but as a consumption uh, avenue. Uh, a lot of people have Twitter accounts where they don't actually tweet at all, um, but they use it as an opportunity to consume what other people are saying, and that's a completely fine um, uh, use case for Twitter. LinkedIn, I think, is a little bit different than those other two, obviously. This is much more of a professional network. Um, it's an opportunity for us to make ourselves better, to learn more about the marketplace, to be able to connect with other individuals who can help us achieve our goals. Um, and really, the types of individuals that we're connecting with here are professionals or colleagues. These, this isn't necessarily going to be connecting with people in the, in the other two buckets. There may be some overlap, um, but uh, not completely. I like this uh, particular graphic here because it really does sum up, I think, some of the things that, or some of the stereotypes anyway, uh, of the different social media networks. And certainly there's a little bit of truth to this, of course, um, you know, not to be disparaging, of course, to any of these other networks. Um, but I do like the way that um, this, uh, this graph here illustrates some of the activities uh, or some of the common uses of, of the different networks. Um, so Twitter would be, uh, someone would say that they're they're eating a donut, whereas Facebook, uh, I would indicate that I actually like donuts. Foursquare is where I would check in and say this is where I actually eat the donuts. Instagram is where I would take a picture of my donut and perhaps apply a filter. Uh, I could YouTube myself eating the donut. Uh, LinkedIn, I would indicate that perhaps one of my skills is donut eating. Uh, Pinterest is where I would show everyone my favorite donut recipe. Uh, Last FM is a radio streaming site, and I can let everyone know that I'm now listening to Donuts. And then Google Plus is um, is an opportunity for me to let people know that uh, I eat donuts and I work at Google. Um, so that I, I think that's probably a, a fair representation of, of at least from a stereotypical standpoint of where the different social media sites fit into our day to day, and how we would potentially use them. Um, when we use the example of, of eating a donut. So what makes LinkedIn different? How is LinkedIn different from some of the other networks? Ben is a, a colleague of mine. He works here at LinkedIn. And Ben was a, uh, a Ben is a former professional baseball player. And so on the left-hand side of your screen is actually a picture of Ben um, from his baseball card. That's actually a baseball card of Ben's. And this is really where, uh, if we use this example of Ben, he had, you know, his life or his career was once baseball, um, which uh, he may not necessarily chat about now as a professional at LinkedIn, and you can see what he looks like today on the right-hand side. Um, but he's not going to abandon his quote-unquote other life or his other brand. And so I would think that from a social media perspective, he would probably talk more about his his life as a as a minor league ball player um, on um, personal social media networks. And on the right-hand side, he could talk about his professional life um, uh, on LinkedIn. He might very well be, you know, a semi-pro baseball player at the same time that he has this quote-unquote professional job, and both networks would allow him to highlight the various differences in his brand at the same time. And so just think about it that way. What we do um, sort of outside of our professional life is something that we can highlight in some of the other social media networks. But what we do in our professional lives, the brand that we want to promote from a professional perspective is really what you're going to highlight on LinkedIn. So think about it like this. Identify who your target audience is. Who is it? Who is that ideal person or that ideal group of individuals? Um, maybe it's a customer. Maybe it's somebody who can help you, um, you know, maybe it's someone who can help you fund your research. Maybe it's someone who is going to become a client or a partner. Um, who is your target audience? If you had them right in front of you right now, what would you tell them? 
for a lot of us, I think that that would be a pretty difficult exercise because it's not something that we practice or rehearse or maybe we really fully appreciate or understand. So what you want to do is before you even start to build out your social media presence specifically on LinkedIn, you want to make sure that you understand who that target audience is, who is it that you're trying to speak to, and then once you have them in front of you, what is it that you want to say? Sometimes we only have that one opportunity to be able to deliver that right message to them. Um, let's make sure that we give ourselves the opportunity to prepare for that um, and understand exactly what we would tell them. What you would tell those people is your brand. That message that you would deliver to somebody that is your target audience is your brand. We want to be able to control that message. We want to be able to control that brand. Um, a lot of large organizations with, with brand names that we recognize that are household brand names do a great job in being able to control the message. As individuals, we can do the same. We have the opportunity to be able to promote a brand that is ours and promote the message that is ours. And so you want to make sure that you continue to do that. Um, that message that you're delivering to your target audience is your brand. So how do we translate that then to our profile? Here is a, a profile of Lauren O'Neill, who's a Western grad, and I've highlighted some areas of her profile here that she's done a great job of um, taking advantage of to make sure that we understand what her brand is. We're going to start with her picture. Picture is really, really important on your LinkedIn profile. Um, you're seven times more likely to be viewed with a profile photo, and it's it's in this particular case, it's it's a really um, it's the first thing I think that most of us looked at, right? Because it's the most visual on this particular page, and so this is really important. Have a professional headshot. You don't necessarily have to have a professional take it. Um, we all have access to a multitude of cameras uh, these days. Get a colleague, get a spouse, a partner, a friend to take a picture of yourself when you're looking your best uh, standing up against a wall um, and uh, you can achieve the same type of, of uh, first impression here that, that Lauren is achieving. You also want to make sure that your profile has a uh, uh, professional history, summary, and goals. Again, this is an expansion of that that initial value proposition that you can deliver to somebody. Give me an idea of what, what you want to achieve, what your background is, why you're credible, um, and what are some of the things that, that you want to do. What's the next step for you? Where do you want to go, and how can I help you get there? You also want to make sure that you're engaging with people on LinkedIn by sharing rich media and content updates. Sometimes in order for me to appreciate the fact that you are a thought leader in the area in which you are highlighting is for you to be able to demonstrate that to me through the act of sharing. If you come across an article or a white paper or perhaps um, some facts or figures um, that would be helpful for me to understand a little bit more about the industry, then go ahead and share that. Make it visual as much as you possibly can. Attach a photo. Um, we love visuals um, as, as in general, and, and that can be uh, really helpful to bring more attention to your particular status updates. You also want to make sure that you're connecting with people. Uh, it's not about the number of connections, it's about the quality of connections. And you can see here that, that Lauren has more than 500 connections, which is great. But my question to Lauren would be, who are those connections? Are those connections individuals that can help you achieve your goal? Or are these connections just for the sake of having connections? So think critically about the connections that you do have and how they're going to be able to help you achieve your goal. You also want to make sure that you're highlighting skills um, and showcase those endorsements um, that other individuals are giving you so that you can provide some insight into your strengths um, and your professional expertise. This is an opportunity, again, for you to really control that message, for you to be able to really highlight the areas that you feel you're, you're, you have strengths in and, and areas of strengths that, again, speak directly back to that professional brand that you've created. Building a strong network is something that I do want to take a, a little bit more time on because it is really, really important for us to make sure that, that we understand the value of a strong network and the fact that we want to make sure that our network is filled with people that can help us um, achieve our goals but also help us increase our, our influence, increase our reach across, uh, across the network. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that when we're connecting or when we're accepting connection requests, 
that we're thinking quality over quantity. This is so, so important. We don't want to connect with just anybody. We want to connect with the right people. So again, uh, take advantage of this. It's not about the size of your network, but you can certainly see that um, the more quality individuals that we have in our network, the greater some of the tools within LinkedIn are going to push people out to us that um, we might want to connect with that we wouldn't have otherwise been aware of. And that happens through the people you may know uh, widget that appears in the top right hand corner of your LinkedIn.com homepage. Um, this is only going to present relevant people to you based on people that are connected to your connections. And so uh, the more complete your profile is and the more people that you're connected to that are within a particular industry or silo that you want to target, the more relevant these particular individuals are going to be. We also want to make sure that when we're connecting with people, that we're doing it in an intelligent way and in a thoughtful way. And what you want to do is eliminate the default message, which is, I'd like to add you to my professional network. Um, you can see here that Lauren is trying to connect to Angela, and she has uh, indic included a personal note. So she's taken away the default message here and indicated that um, you know, she thanks her for her time and her help, and she indicates that her presentation was very informative. Um, a nice thoughtful message, Angela receiving this, you know, likes to hear the compliment, it seems genuine, and so the likelihood that, that Angela is going to accept this uh, invitation request is likely a lot higher than if you uh, kept the default. Now one thing I want to point out is that uh, I recognize that this option is only available when you're connecting to people via the desktop. If you are connecting to people via the mobile device, uh, or the mobile app, excuse me, you do not have the opportunity to customize this message. So sometimes it requires you to pause and wait until you get back in front of a, your desktop to be able to, to make that connection request. Um, so you want to be thoughtful about that. It is something that um, will hopefully be changing soon, but at the moment it is a limitation of the mobile app, so be very, very conscious of that. You also want to make sure that you're engaging your network. So now that you've built up these, these people that you want to be connected to, make sure that you're engaging with them. You don't just want to be someone who sort of stands on the sidelines and connects with these people and then doesn't leverage them at all. Uh, letting people know that here are some news about the industry in which I'm participating in, or perhaps there's some exciting news at your own company, or perhaps there's jobs, or an article that I've been recently published in, or something that would be of interest to the people that you're connected with. Make sure that they know that and share those updates. And you can do that by right on your homepage in the top left-hand corner, there's a share update position or a share update box that allows you to share those um, updates with either your network, uh, just your connections, and you can also simultaneously update your Twitter account if you so choose. So take advantage of this and make sure that you're engaging your network at any opportunity that you can. Your professional dashboard is really what we call your home page, and here's where you can get uh, a number of different um, uh, pieces of information that again can help you help make you smarter, help make you more successful, and, and perhaps make your your day a little bit easier. Uh, the first would be to take a look at Pulse, uh, which is our our news aggregator. Uh, there's also a mobile app that allows you to do this. You can customize your industry choices here and be able to see relevant articles and news that are uh, important to you and your connections. Um, your homepage will also deliver knowledge to you, uh, both in terms of what you see on Pulse, but also what you see from people's updates. That can also deliver business intelligence as well. So it can be really helpful for us to know when our, our connections are moving around, when organizations that we're following are hiring, what people are saying. So there's all sorts of different things that we can learn about from examining the news feed on LinkedIn.com. Make sure that you do customize your news feed on Pulse to industries and sources that are relevant to you in your career. Again, this can help you uh, move the needle a little bit by seeing what other individuals are doing online. Um, and you, I would also encourage you to follow influencers. There's approximately 500 influencers on LinkedIn that um, 
come from a wide range of industry and background, and each of them have the opportunity to be able to produce some long-form updates in the in the form of a blog. Um, and this can give you a real neat sense of what some successful um, people in the business world in your particular industries of choice are, are saying and perhaps offer you um, some additional leverage points that can make you better or more successful in your particular career. So this is all original content from thought leaders that are on the LinkedIn network, the, mo the most popular obviously being Richard Branson, but our, C our CEO certainly uh, talks about a number of uh, important aspects of, of his business philosophy and I would encourage you to follow as many influencers as, as you think are relevant to you in your career. You also want to make sure that you're joining groups and participating in the conversation in those groups. So again, it's not just about joining any old group, it's about joining a group that you could potentially offer some, some input in and some value to. Um, so join those communities on LinkedIn that are relevant to your background, interests, organization, and your career. And lastly, I would suggest that you follow companies. Companies can be really, really important for you to be able to uh, understand not only what your competition is doing, but also what are some of the um, similar um, companies or similar uh, organizations in your industry are, are doing. Um, it can also highlight um, some of the things that perhaps your business may want to consider doing as well. Um, so anytime you follow a company, um, you will receive the company updates uh, in your news feed. And lastly, I, 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 I uh, apologize, this is the last thing. Uh, you want to make sure that you also install the mobile app. So uh, appreciate the fact that 43%, more than 43% of our membership uh, is now accessing LinkedIn through these mobile apps. Um, you want to make sure that you do the same because it, it allows you to be able to take that networking opportunity that you have on the road. So if you aren't in front of your desktop all the time, certainly having LinkedIn on your iPad or your iPhone, Android or your BlackBerry can be really, really helpful. Um, I know I use them probably as much, if not more, than than I do uh, the actual desktop. So again, this can be uh, extremely helpful, but also important for you to recognize that if 43% of our members are coming to LinkedIn via the mobile device, then we need to make sure that we tailor our message so that um, we are appreciate the fact that people might be looking at uh, our messaging on a much smaller screen than perhaps we're used to. So with that, I will uh, encourage you to go ahead and build your own brand on LinkedIn. Identify what you, uh, what you want to say to your target audience and then make sure that everything that you do on LinkedIn and on your profile speaks to that particular target audience. I hope this was helpful. If you need any other assistance, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to learn.linkedin.com. Uh, it's a great resource for you to be able to learn more about what we spoke about here today. Uh, and I encourage you to listen to some of the other sessions that we also have here as well. So with that, I thank you for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.